Hey Camping Nation, welcome back. This week we're talking about how to set up the camper for the weekend and uh, not much else. This isn't a step-by-step -step list for everybody and everything. Some of it will not apply to your camper, some of it will. And my order of operation may differ than yours, but it gives you an idea of what to do, how to do, and why to do it. So stay tuned. So once you are backed up into your parking spot, you want to let your engine run to keep your transmission and your engine cool, actually to cool them down. The first thing I like to do is hook up the power. Grab your cord, make sure you're hooking it up properly. You got two prongs that are similar and then one that is different, so it only goes in one way. Once you line them up, push it in and twist it clockwise. Tighten up that ring and then once you think you're done, grab the body, shove it in further, and twist it harder, and then you can tighten that more. Go over to your power pole. You make sure the power is off. Always, always, always off. See if there's anything wrong with the outlet. This one isn't the best, but it's okay. Plug your stuff in, and flip on the circuit breaker. Now go inside and turn on the air conditioning. Now I already knew that this lot was level. This whole park is pretty much level. There we go. There, see, level. So now that I've got that figured out, we go up inside and check front to back. And that's pretty much dead nuts. Throw the chalk blocks in, one side and the other. And then we can start disconnecting the truck. Disconnect the lights, disconnect the hitch, open it up, slide that back and it stays open. Disconnect the two safety chains and then disconnect the emergency brake if you have it power if you have it hooked up separate. Now once you get all that done, you can go ahead and start with the power jack and start lifting up the trailer. Now I was just doing that little violently instead of waiting until it was up all the way. I just kind of do that and let it slam. Sometimes I kick it and it comes up done quicker. But once you get the two weight distribution springs off, you raise it up more. Make sure that the ball has cleared from underneath the hitch, the tongue. Double check everything. And then you go in and pull your truck forward. Enough time has gone by now, you can go ahead and shut it off. So you come back here. And you can take these off really easily by swinging them forward. And you see it, I just swing it forward and then I just grab it and it comes right off. That's without any grease. I really need to grease those. Set them up here out of the way or wherever you want to put them. Take that off so your shins don't bleed. Now I put my pin through the bottom hole there like that. That way I never lose my pin. And make sure you pull up your pants. You don't want everybody seeing that. And lower the front back down to where it was, go in and double check the bubble, and get it where you want it. Next step for me is the X chocks. These help stabilize forward to rear movements. You don't need to use an impact, but it's nice. And then you do the other side, which I omitted from this, and kind of clean up after yourself. Now I push out the slides. while we're waiting for the slides. This is actually sped up. While we're waiting for the slides, why don't you go ahead and uh, consider hitting the like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Yep, nope, nope, we're not done. Still got another slide. Gotta push the kitchen out now. Now we got that done, let's go ahead and start stabilizing it some more. Those who've been around for a while know that I like stabilizing my setup four times. I use the chalk blocks to help stabilize it. Then I use the X chocks. Then I put these things down for what they're worth. 
which isn't much. Then I've got the DIY ones that I love. But you just throw some cribbing down. You want to have it cribbed up. If the scissor jack is all the way down, then it's not going to have very much stability. Matter of fact, I should probably have a little more cribbing under there. All right, so now all four stabilizers are down. It's time to hook up the water. Get your hose out and make sure you're hooking it up to the right spot. See, fresh water connection. The two underneath that, those are for your black flush. You don't want to hook up there. Every once in a while, you want to pull the screen out and take a good look at it. This one's getting pretty nasty, but it's good enough for now. Stick that back in. Now, you could just plug the hose directly into the fitting. Here, see? But you got that leverage right there, the weight of the hose pulling down. And the leverage creates double weight, triple weight, as far as the way that it affects the fitting. Now, if you put one of these brass 90s on here, not only does it look better, but there's less weight pulling on the fitting. Okay, now we come back over here. Notice that the filter has an arrow on it and it's kind of foolproof, really. People argue about this. I usually go with a little bit of a flex hose at the top coming right off of the spigot, then my pressure regulator, then filter, then hose. People will argue a million different times in a million different ways. This is the way I do it. And then some people get a splitter like this, like my neighbor does here. That way you can have a garden hose. Once you get it all turned on, then open up the water. Now you have to go and bleed all the pipes in your travel trailer. My preferred method is to go to the one furthest away from the connection and start there. Obviously that would be my rear kitchen. So I got to get all the stuff out of the sink. I use the sink when I'm traveling put stuff in there that I don't want moving around. There's, look at that, look at that. It's just spitting, and it's even spitting some nasty colors. And you just gotta sit there and watch it, babysit it. It'll stop spitting eventually. Grab some paper towels and clean up the mess, because like I said, there's gonna be some rusty water coming out of there. But then you do the hot water side also. This one's gonna take a minute. You've got a five gallon water here that needs to be filled up. Now this one's been sitting for a month almost, so I gotta make sure that the water doesn't stink bad. But once it all gets bled out, then you get to go inside and do the other faucets. But since you got it going all the way to the back, then the water main is already full and you just have a short pipe from the main to the sink that needs filled up. Don't forget the toilets. They will spit and cough and spray, just like this does. But once you get in solid water out of there, go ahead and shut it all off. And you can turn on the water heater if you want. Then the water's done. Now you can concentrate on other things like bringing out the zero gravity chairs and setting up by the fire pit. All three of them. Get the kitchen tables, not the kitchen tables, but get the side tables out, end tables out. Get the dog pen out, put the tablecloth on the table. And of course, if your dog's with you, then you need to set that up first. But here you go, that's how I usually do it. I'm waiting on the boy to come so he can help me with the pop-up awning. Then I do my stabilizers, my homemade stabilizers. And this can even wait a day right here. This is last. Since you got holding tanks, you don't need to have the wastewater hooked up right away. But once you do, you see how I have ours. The clear, the clear elbow is key. That way you can see what's going down into the drain. That way you know when you're done flushing. There you go. So the one thing I did fail to mention was turning on the gas. You got the gas tanks up in the front. You go ahead and turn on the valve on the tank. You got to crack it slowly. Just barely turn it 
and then wait three or four seconds and then you can turn it on all the way and what that's doing is you want to give just a little bit of pressure and then full pressure if you just go straight to full pressure it's going to kick off the what do you call it a uh, blast valve i think they call it but if it all comes rushing out at once it's going to shut it off then you need to bleed that line too so you go into the kitchen turn on one of the burners and just hold the lighter there and as all the air gets pushed out once the gas is there it'll light after that then you can go ahead and turn on your water heater assuming you've already cleared all the water lines if you turn on the water heater and there's no water in there you're going to destroy your water heater so there is some importance on the order of operation on that so that is a quick rundown on how things are done as far as setting up uh, again some campers are going to be different some things don't apply and other things i missed that do apply to yours this is just a rough rundown one last thing before we take off if you could go ahead and hit the like and the subscribe and all that, that'd be awesome. I'm amazed at how many people watch that are not members. The more people that like and subscribe, then the more people can be reached through the algorithm and then they can find out this information also. So like and subscribe, hit the bell thing. Thanks for tuning in. And if we don't see you in the comments, we'll see you at the campgrounds. Take it easy.